Today, I'm flying Japanese first class for 15 hours from Tokyo all the way to New York. I'll show you exactly what it's like from the first class lounge to my private enclosed suite and the fine dining on board. All this does not come cheap though, with an eye-watering ticket price of over $13,000, but you're invited along for the adventure. So with that, let's pick up our journey in Tokyo. Konnichiwa and welcome to Japan. We're on the way to Haneda International Airport, which is the closer of the two Tokyo airports at around a 20 minute drive from my hotel. I highly recommend the Conrad by the way. Our flight departs Terminal 3 today, a dedicated international terminal and a major hub for ANA. Let's waste no time and head straight up into departures. First class passengers are invited to use the exclusive check-in desks, which unlike the rest of the terminal, feature no queue. As we're flying to the US, there are a few additional formalities to complete, though these are taken care of efficiently and in no time at all I'm presented with my boarding pass. I'm thankful too to have an airline representative escort me personally through security, something judging by the other queues has saved me significant time. Stamped out of Japan, I find myself in the busy airside section of the terminal. It's safe to say travel is very much back here in Tokyo, which is great to see. Next, I just have to drop into duty free and pick up the obligatory green tea Kit Kats. Have you tried these before? Now for the first class lounge, located right near my gate 109. Seeing as we're in Japan and this is the airline's home base, I'm expecting great things. The suites lounge offers comfy seating, private office space and a buffet selection with some made to order food. There's even free pour liquor and champagne, though nothing outstanding to write home about. My favourite though is the relaxation space with sweeping apron views, so this is where we'll head now. Given the proximity to our gate, I can spy our Boeing 777 parked up below us. Overall, I'd say this lounge is quite disappointing. Whilst the made to order food looked good, there's no spa, limited shower facilities, a below average beverage offering, and really just doesn't feel that special. Anyhow, the real magic is on board of course, so let's hot foot it over to gate 109. It's a full flight with space for over 200 passengers, and the gate is a hive of activity. It's not long to wait though, and within moments, the eight passengers in first class are called forward. Now we get a proper look at our aircraft, this four-year-old Boeing 777-300ER. So let's head down the jet bridge and explore. But just before we get on board and experience one of the world's most luxurious first-class flights, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Soundcore by Anchor. Join my travels, being able to enjoy my favourite music in peace is vital, but unfortunately due to the noisy nature of an aircraft, this can be a challenge. That is until now. Introducing Soundcore Space One headphones, with an upgraded noise cancelling structure which adapts to the environment around you and even blocking out distracting voices, oh and crying babies, with a two times stronger voice reduction. This is thanks to their adaptive noise cancelling technology, with Space One adjusting to the best noise reduction level according to the surroundings in real time. Aside from looking fantastic, they feature an 8 degree floating axis design, making sure for a natural comfortable fit. What's more, Soundcore Space One deliver crisp high res audio, with 3 times more detail than standard Bluetooth codecs, for rich listening without any tangled wires. Turn down the crowd wherever you go with Soundcore Space One, get yours using my link down in my video description. I'm warmly welcomed on board and shown over to the far aisle, where my suite 2 kilo is located. Let's get my luggage stowed then, in my very own overhead bin, and settle into the suite. Not forgetting of course, there's ample room in front to stow my rucksack. Wow, first impressions are really quite something, I just can't get over the size of that TV. I'm served a pre-poured glass of champagne, unsure exactly what this is, but I can't say I'm one to say no. Next, the friendly flight attendant presents me with a selection of amenities. Bear in mind I also get a separate amenity kit along with PJs, a jersey and slippers. It's not long until we're ready to push back from stand, so let's get my seatbelt fastened as we begin our taxi onto the runway as the safety video is run. 
座席とテーブルを元の位置にお戻しください酸素マスクが降りてきた際はマスクを強く引き寄せ鼻と口に当てて呼吸しますFirst order of business is lunch. Or, well, I'm not even sure what given the time zones. A&A have a dine on demand concept in first class, offering an extensive Japanese menu, as well as international options. But as we're flying a Japanese airline, I absolutely must sample the local cuisine. With my order placed, let's take a proper look around this Boeing 777. In total, there are 212 seats spread across four classes of travel. From 112 economy seats with a 34 inch pitch and 13 inch touchscreen monitor to 24 premium economy class seats with a reclining 38 inch pitch and the world's largest premium economy TV screen at over 15 inches. Moving into business class, we have the room, consisting of 64 private business class suites with fully closing doors and ultra wide seats. Having flown this myself before, I can vouch for it being one of the very best in the sky. Finally, we reach our cabin, first class, aka the suite. There There are eight of such suites here in a one to one configuration, all featuring a 43 inch 4K TV. I'm seated in the aforementioned two kilo, but in truth, there's not really a bad seat. Like the room, these feature sliding doors, though they're higher here, and the overall seat features significantly more space. On that note, let's boot the Tims off and get changed into the provided slippers. I make it champagne o'clock, and there are two standouts served today a vintage 2008 Bill Cart salmon and my favourite Krug Grand Cuvee. Naturally, I've opted for the latter. For reference, this retails at around £225 or $280 a bottle. I was going to try and explain the taste in some more detail, but to be frank, I have no idea what I'm talking about. So here's what I found online floral aromas of ripe citrus fruits, gingerbread, and marzipan. There's even grilled notes of almond paste and lemoncello, apparently. To go with the Krug, I'm served in a mousse bouche of dry cured tuna ham with a sake sauce, squid wrapped in Brussels sprouts, and roast beef. Yes, this isn't a normal flight video. There's going to be a lot of firsts for me today. Now it's time for my appetizer, known in Japanese as Sakazuke. Sorry for the pronunciation. And rather than the usual caviar, I'll be trying geo duck clam. I didn't really look into this beforehand, but looking at it now, crikey. For reference, it's the largest burrowing clam, which has a mind blowing lifespan of 146 years. And you know what? It actually tastes delicious, as well as being an excellent source of protein. Next up is Nomono, translated to simmered plate, consisting of conga and sea bream. This is also pressuring me to improve my chopstick skill set, even more of a challenge on broth based dishes. They keep on coming. Now for Otsukuri, which is seared bonito and North Pacific giant octopus. This is actually a sashimi dish with just the bonito skin charred. I think we can all agree this is quite the contrast to my usual medium rare steak. For shusai or main course, I've opted for the sake grilled tile fish with crispy rice and a side of kibachi. And this, before you ask, is a chilled poached beef and yuba roll. I can confidently say this is the most varied and ambitious in flight meal of my life. Now for dessert. I'm served macaroon with vanilla, strawberry, and pistachio ice cream. Of course, I just have to have the Hibiki 21 whiskey on the side, which just so happens to be a very rare blend. It also happens to cost around $1,300 a bottle. And before I most likely get dismissed for so much ice in my whiskey, this is how it was served, and I must say, it's utterly divine. With dinner service over, I think it's time to change into something a little comfier and explore the sleeping arrangements. We'll head to one of the two bathrooms at the very front of the first class cabin. These are kept immaculately clean throughout the flight. 
and even feature a Japanese style toilet. What I really find staggering is the level of amenities provided, from mouthwash to a body sheet to the amenity kit I'm gifted stocked with pricey Ginza cosmetics. Now trust ANA to come up with a simple yet innovative way to change on board. Introducing the dressing platform, where you can stand to ensure your feet don't touch the bathroom floor when changing. Much better, let's get my teeth brushed and head back to my suite. I'd also note the lovely crew took my jeans and hoodie to hang up in the wardrobe to prevent them from creasing during my sleep. In my absence, my suite has been transformed into a bed, complete with a mattress topper, duvet and fluffy pillow. Let's get those suite doors shut for the ultimate privacy, lay back and get some rest. Many hours later. Well, good morning from 35,000 feet. It's actually been morning now for close to 12 hours, given that we've crossed the international dateline. Not wanting a traditional international breakfast, let's continue with the Japanese selection. So what have I gone for? Well, of course, my last Japanese meal. I think it's fitting to choose the ramen, one of my all time favorite meals. With my meal out of the way, I think it's time to try out the in-flight entertainment. This is called ANA Sky Channel and features quite the variety of content. It's not quite Emirates, but the selection is strong, especially on the crisp 4K 43 inch TV. It's not all too long before we'll be starting our descent into New York's JFK. So let's head back to the bathroom and get changed. Despite being such a long flight, across so many time zones, I feel pretty fresh. I guess being well fed and having a lot of sleep does go a long way to help mitigate the jet lag. As we prepare for landing, I think it's time to talk cost. How much did this flight cost me? Well, as shown earlier, the retail price of this flight is over $13,000, but I paid nowhere near this. I started my flight in Seoul, South Korea, where I was able to book this for $5,415. In fact, I could have booked this cheaper still by using Virgin Atlantic Air Miles. Providing you find availability, this can be redeemed for 85,000 miles each way, with around $300 in taxes. Availability is sporadic though, and just didn't work for my travel date, but deals are very much out there if you have the flexibility. Anyway, welcome to New York. That completes our 15 hour journey. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all again next time.